On July 30th, 2025, as a colossal 8.7 magnitude quake ripped through the seafloor off Russia, a tectonic fuse was lit. Experts in China issued an urgent warning. The shock wave was traveling, transferring immense pressure toward the massive Tanlu Fault that runs through the nation's heartland. The warning raised a terrifying question. What happens when this pressure wave hits the three gorges again? But what if that distant quake isn't the real story? What if it's just the final nudge to a system already at its breaking point? Today we confront the evidence that the greatest danger to the Three Gorges Dam comes from within. We will expose the hidden fractures in its geology, its design, and its very concrete that prove the dam is actively generating its own earthquakes, creating a risk far greater than the world has been told. When the Three Gorges Dam plugged the Yangtze River in 2003, it did more than stop a river. It awoke the earth beneath it. The ancient silence of the Hanling Massif was shattered. After the reservoir was filled past 150 meters, the frequency of earthquakes in the region skyrocketed by a staggering seven to eight times. For years, these tremors were dismissed as the harmless groans of a settling giant. But the ground was telling a different story, a story of escalating violence. It began just months after the first filling, with a swarm of over 600 microquakes rattling Bardon County. By 2004, a magnitude 3.0 quake was violent enough to crack adobe houses and send 100 kilogram boulders crashing down hillsides. By 2008, as operators pushed the reservoir to its 175 meter limit for the first time, a magnitude 4.6 quake shook an area of 400 square kilometers. The ground was convulsing with ever-increasing fury. In 2012, a single day saw 152 earthquakes strike the same region. The crescendo was building. Then, on December 16, 2013, the hammer fell. A powerful magnitude 5.1 earthquake ripped through Bedong County, right in the heart of the reservoir. The official narrative crumbled. This was no settling groan, it was a war. A team of scientists raced to find the cause. Their findings, published in the prestigious journal Geophysical Research Letters, revealed a nightmare scenario. The quake was a true tectonic event, triggered by the dam itself. The immense reservoir was acting as a hydraulic weapon, injecting high-pressure water deep into a specific layer of fractured limestone, forcing an ancient fault line apart. In solving the mystery, they uncovered a ghost in the geological machine, a 15-kilometer-long active fault that was never supposed to be there. This LCH fault, now awakened, had been completely missed by every official survey conducted before the dam was built. Suddenly, the risk had a name. And with a name, it could be measured. The math was terrifying. The scientists calculated that the LCH fault has the potential to unleash a powerful magnitude 6.5 earthquake. When they ran the numbers on what that would do to the dam, the conclusion was a death sentence written in probabilities. There is a 13% chance, more than one in eight, that the shaking would exceed the dam's official design limits. But the assassin, once awakened, did not go back to sleep. The terror continued. In March 2014, a double shock of magnitude 4.2 and 4.5 struck Zigui. Then in June 2017, Another violent double shock of magnitude 4.8 and 4.6 hit the border of Zigui and Bardon, collapsing over 160 buildings. The ground acceleration from this event was measured at 0.165 g, more than three times higher than the local building code standard. The ghost of disasters past has already shown us the script. In 1967, India's Koina Dam, also built on stable rock, triggered a magnitude 6.3 quake that killed 180 people. The Three Gorges is now following in its deadly footsteps. The science delivers an undeniable verdict. The dam has created its own assassin, and that assassin is still active. This proven, persistent local hazard is only the beginning of the crisis. The real danger is what happens when this violent seismic zone meets the dam's other deeper floors.
A powerful earthquake is a grave threat to any dam. But the Three Gorges is uniquely unprepared because it was built on a foundation of lies, both literal and metaphorical. The first lie was the ground itself. The official story sold to the world was one of solid, stable granite. The geological reality is a treacherous landscape known as the Huanling Syncline. This isn't a simple, solid block. It's a massive geological feature of rock that has been intensely folded and buckled under pressure over millions of years, like a piece of metal bent one too many times, leaving it stressed and weak. This unstable formation is crisscrossed by a web of known fault lines, the Xi'an Nu Mountain, Juwan Creek, and Jian Shi Faults, all of which are now showing increased seismic activity. The dam was not built on an island of stability. It was dropped into a nest of active fractures. The second lie was the blueprint. Even a perfect design would be at risk on such ground, but the Three Gorges blueprint was dangerously flawed. Engineers committed a catastrophic hydraulic gradient error, treating the 600 kilometers long reservoir like a bathtub assuming its surface would be flat. The consequences have been devastating. In 2009, while the water at the dam was at a supposedly safe 145 meters, the water level 600 kilometers upstream in Trongqing surged to 183 meters, flooding the city. The dam's safety margins were based on a fantasy. This design flaw is compounded by the dam's schizophrenic purpose. It is trapped in a permanent conflict between safety and profit. To prevent floods, operators must keep the water low. To generate power, they must keep it high. Professor Hei Weifang perfectly summarized the insane result. When the downstream is in a drought, the dam needs to store water. When the downstream is flooding, the Three Gorges needs to discharge water. This operational schizophrenia is a feature of a system that prioritizes state revenue over human safety. Every day, the operators are forced to gamble with millions of lives for the sake of electricity output. The dam's primary safety feature, its flood control capacity, was itself a calculated deception. A secret letter from a chief project engineer, Zhang Guando, revealed that officials knew the stated capacity of 22.15 billion cubic meters was a lie. An exaggerated figure, impossible to achieve without crippling the dam's economic functions. This truth was deliberately kept from the public to ensure the project, a monument to political pride, could not be stopped. The safety of the people was sacrificed on the altar of political ambition, long before the first batch of concrete was ever poured. The final and most damning lie is the physical structure itself. The image of a single monolithic wall of concrete is a carefully crafted illusion. According to expert Dr. Wang Wei Luo, the dam is actually composed of dozens of separate concrete blocks, each resting on the bedrock by its own weight. They are not anchored deep into the earth. This segmented design has a terrifying secret. The dam is designed to move. The blocks are intended to shift slightly and press against each other, creating a tight seal. But this relies on them moving uniformly, in a perfect line. The reality is that they are moving unevenly, twisting and grinding against each other. This non-uniform displacement is what creates the cracks at the joints. This explains the earlier reports of physical flaws. The horizontal displacement that engineer Pan Jia Zhang admitted to in 2003 is the dam walking unevenly. The cracks wide enough to insert an adult's hand are the result of these massive blocks twisting apart. Dr. Wang Wai Lu describes the structure not as a wall of bronze and iron, but as being like cheese riddled with voids from poor construction and three trenches and a hundred holes due to the massive cuts made for the ship locks and ship lift. The hypocrisy of the regime is laid bare by its own regulations. After claiming the dam could withstand anything short of a nuclear attack, they issued rules forbidding even kites and drones from flying near it. This history of concealed problems casts a long, dark shadow. After the devastating 2016 Yankansi floods, the final overall project acceptance report, which was due that year, was never released. To this day, the world's largest dam has never been officially signed off as complete and safe. So how does a system so compromised finally break? What is the final push that brings this foundation of lies crashing down? The path to ruin begins in one of two ways. 
According to a 2018 study, a spontaneous magnitude 6.0 to 6.5 earthquake detonates on the LCH fault, a self-inflicted wound from the reservoir's own immense pressure. Or, the external shock arrives, a pulse of tectonic stress from a distant quake channeled down the massive Tan Chen Lujang fault zone, delivering the final, fatal mudge to the unstable ground beneath the dam. Either way, the shaking ignites the true nightmare. A scar on the canyon wall gives way. It is one of the 4,000 documented geological hazard points that litter the region, one of the 214 known major landslide zones now set in motion. Millions of tons of rock and soil don't just slide, they explode into the reservoir. A monstrous inland tsunami, a reservoir Saishi, is born. Channeled by the narrow canyon walls, it grows in height and power, a liquid battering ram hurtling toward the dam. In the control room, the operators are lined and trapped. Their screens, based on the flawed hydraulic gradient calculations, show a fantasy of a calm, flat lake. The reality racing toward them is a wall of water, and they have no safety buffer. The reservoir, kept dangerously high, near the 175-meter mark for power generation, is full to the brim. They face an impossible choice. A choice between two forms of annihilation. Let the wave crash over the top, a force that would scour away the dam's downstream foundation and trigger a complete structural collapse. Or, in a desperate act of self-preservation, open the floodgates for an uncontrolled, panicked release, unleashing a biblical flood upon the tens of millions living downstream. The wave collides with the dam. It slams not into a solid wall, but into a line of shifting, 27 million ton concrete blocks held together by little more than gravity. The water jets into the pre-existing cracks and construction voids, pressurizing the flawed structure from within. The force wrenches at the massive blocks that are already walking unevenly, turning their non-uniform displacement into a catastrophic shearing event at their weakened joints. The massive cuts for the ship blocks and ship lift, the three trenches and a hundred holes, become gaping wounds, ripped open by the surge. The failure of the Three Gorges Dam is not a crack. It is a complete, systemic execution, where every lie, geological, engineering and structural, comes due at once. So where does this leave us? With a ticking time bomb, and a regime that refuses to admit it exists. The path forward requires holding the Chinese Communist Party accountable. World governments need to stop accepting Beijing's hollow assurances, and publicly demand the dam's long overdue final inspection and acceptance report. Global companies like Apple and Tesla, whose factories sit directly in the potential flood path, must confront the massive risk to their supply chains. The dam's stability is a global security and economic issue, and the world needs to treat it like one. For the rest of us, our job is to pierce the CCP's wall of silence. The evidence is out there from the peer-reviewed science to the detailed reports on the dam's deep floors. We have to keep sharing it, talking about it, and amplifying the voices of the experts who have been warning us for years. The Three Gorges Dam is a monument to the CCP's reckless pride. The Sword of Damocles is hanging over the Yangtze River. The question now is whether the world will hold the regime that hung it there to account before the thread breaks.